And here we go. After three years and three seasons, kinda, the hit Disney Channel cartoon, The Owl House, has finally come to an end. This show about a girl named Lou stumbling into a new world of fantasy and adventure, meeting new friends like Ida and King, finding herself and saving the world, was such an amazing experience. Even if Disney wanted to sabotage it every chance it had. I mean, where I live, the finale didn't air on YouTube until 1.30 a.m. Disney, why do you hate this show so much? But. Whatever. The show aired its final episode earlier this month, and as is tradition here, now I gotta recap the whole thing for you guys with some bad jokes and even worse drawings. Now, if you're just tuning in, this is the third and final part in an ongoing series of Owl House recaps. And that means right away we're gonna be getting into massive big boy spoiler territory. So if you wanna catch up, there's two other videos on the channel covering seasons one and two. Check those out for context, or you know, you could watch the actual show. There's that too. And speaking of immersive fantasy worlds, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, it's finally happening, Raid Shadow Legends! Yes! You guys know it, it's a super detailed tactical RPG with incredible graphics and an intense combination of PvE and PvP combat. It's a classic choose your pick from an awesome collection of over 700 champions. Heck, you could make a little dinner party with them. There's Hotatsu, a winged demonized Oni from the Shadow Realm. I'm sure they're quite the storyteller. There's the Assassin. I mean, they brought their own utensils and you just never know when a brutal stabbing might be needed. Of course, you got to invite Gurgo the Agor. Dude's a legendary with crazy ice powers. Not only does that mean free ice, but then if you don't invite him, I don't know, you might be the ice. And then to balance things out, you gotta get Ignatius. He's got fire powers and just look at him. And that's just a few of them. There are so many champions, way too many to go through in one segment. But it gets better because this year is Raid Shadow Legends fourth anniversary and there are so many cool new champions to choose from. But that's not even all because there is so much new in Raid Shadow Legends. The game continues to get bigger and bigger with one of its most requested features, live arena PVP. Duke it out against other players live, picking and banning champions before dueling to determine the ultimate warrior. Plus. It is April, the month of Easter, so Raid is going on an egg hunt. If you wanna check it out, all you gotta do is download Raid using the links below, copy your player ID, and head over to egghunt.polarium.com from April 14th to May 15th. Then you just enter your player ID and you get to enjoy some exciting AR adventures. And if you're a new player, you might even have the chance to win some legendary Raid champions as well as Amazon gift cards. And existing Raid players can find a special promo code to get some cool in-game gifts as well. So if all that sounds cool to you, hit the link in the description to check out all of this exciting stuff and more coming to Raid Shadow Legends. Just click that link or scan the QR code in the top right hand corner of the screen to download the game with a free starter pack and some in-game loot. Major thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring, it's a rite of passage. And now it's time for the end of the Owl House. All right, so where we leave off in season two? Oh yeah, uh, Luce, Amity, Willow, Gus, and Hunter had all been flung back into the human realm after the events of the Day of Unity, where the evil Emperor Bellos teamed up with this cosmic entity called the Collector to cast a dangerous spell that would wipe out everyone in the Boiling Isles. King freed the Collector from this little moon tablet prison. He then absolutely destroyed Bellos with the flick of his finger, and then he started wreaking havoc on the Boiling Isles. Plus, we learned that Bellos used to be this jerk of a human named Philip Wittabane, who Luce accidentally helped when she traveled back in time to talk to him, not knowing that he was Bellos. Oops. We found out that King is actually the last of an ancient race of magical behemoths called Titans, and that the giant Titan corpse that this whole land is built on is actually his dad. Fun. Fun times. Luce and Amity shared their first kiss, which Disney Disney was just so cool about. <laughs> and we found out that Luce's rival turned friend Hunter is actually one in a long line of clones of some dude Bellos used to hunt witches with. Which, I'll just spoil it right now, it was his brother Caleb. It doesn't play too much into the plot of the last few episodes, so it's just, it's his brother. Hunter is a clone of Bellos' brother Caleb. Yeah, uh, yeah, if you're just hopping into this series, you've missed You've missed a lot. <laughs> and I mentioned basically all of this last time, but there were two little things that I did miss. First, right before the Day of Unity, Luce actually got her palisman, which are those cute animal things that turn into witch's staffs. But right now, it's just an egg, and it'll only hatch when Luce bonds with it by sharing her innermost desire. But since everything's so tense and chaotic and complicated right now, she doesn't even know what to think. So until then, egg. Oh, uh, and then there's Bellos. You might think this dude would be dead considering his entire physical being was splattered against a wall like one of those sticky hands. But nah, he's just goop now. Living, breathing, goop. And you see this? 
Yeah, that blink and you miss it moment at the end of the last episode is actually Bello sneaking his way into the human realm. I, uh, I, I kind of missed that part. And it's not that I just forgot to mention it. I, I, I turned the video off by that point. I, <laughs> I just completely missed it. So at the start of season three, Luce is back home for the first time in forever. And she and all of her friends take up shelter at her mom's house. So Luce is finally able to reunite with her mom, Camila, after months of being stuck in the demon realm. Oh, and don't forget, that shape-shifting demon who took Luce's place for a while, V, still there too. She seems to be doing well, again, I'm sorry if you missed everything up to this point. <laughs> There's a lot to keep track of. And even with the whole, our home is being destroyed as we speak and we have no way to stop it thing kind of looming over everyone, the gang gets on pretty well in the human realm. They learn about human stuff, they try to build ways back to the demon realm, and Luce comes out to her mama's by, which is super sweet. But obviously, as much fun as they might be having, they gotta get back to the boiling aisles. But in order to do that, they'd need Titan's blood, a rare magical substance that is the key to creating portals between realms. Luckily, the shack that Amity, Willow, Gus, and Hunter are staying in just happened to have a map to Titan's blood buried under the floorboards. Yeah, that's uh, that's convenient. <laughs> and after enough digging, Hunter's palisman Flapjack managed to find it. Was that? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, that's another thing I forgot to mention last time. Hunter, the grim walker with no magical powers, got a palisman. Is a cute little cardinal named Flapjack and their best friends. So with a map to Titan's blood in their hands, the group goes out to investigate, but Hunter stays behind for a minute only to be attacked by evil goop. Yeah, uh, so remember how Bellos got slushied by the collector and then managed to ooze his way back into the human realm? Well, some of his gross goopy self has been hiding out in this shack. And when Hunter touches this goop, Bellos starts to infect his mind, making Hunter see visions of Bellos everywhere and kind of driving him mad. So there's a lot going on, and things kind of reach ahead on Halloween night when the gang all go to a local haunted hayride. Hunter once again sees a vision of Bellos in the distance, and realizing that Bellos must be after the Titan's blood too, he grabs Luce and they go off to investigate on their own, eventually reaching this nifty looking graveyard. This is, this is probably not nothing, nothing possible bad could happen here. No. <laughs> and here, Bellos's possession of Hunter takes full control. Bellos as Hunter attacks Luce right as the rest of the gang find out where they ran off to. Which means we've got our first big fight scene of the season. And it's got the fancy animation too. If Flapjack does their best to help in the fight, but Bellos just grabs them and cracks them open without a second thought. Just freaking jerk, mean to birds. And this is the last straw. Hunter manages to regain control of himself long enough to grab the Titan's blood and toss it into a nearby lake. But Bellos takes back over and dives head first after it, nearly drowning Hunter. That is until Camila just jumps right in too, bringing Hunter back to the surface like a freaking hero. Bellos finally ejects himself from Hunter's body, grabs the Titan's blood, and just pieces out back to the demon realm. But Hunter is left barely clinging to life. That is until Flapjack, still heavily injured, flies in and sacrifices themselves so that their magic can revive Hunter. The gang then get up, dust themselves off, and hop through the portal after Bellos. Even Camila. Oh, uh, V stays behind though. So say goodbye to them for the rest of the video. Bye V. I like that you were voiced by Amethyst. So while all this was going on, back in the Boiling Isles, the Collector is just messing the whole place up. He's like, ha, this is fun, let's play a game. And everyone else is like, ah! Yeah, the Collector's been running around turning everyone into toy puppets to play games with, but keeps King around to be friends. Flash forward a bit to when Luce and the gang make it back to the Demon Realm and, Oh my God, look at what the collector's done to this place. This is a dang Lisa Frank nightmare. Where's Dippy Fresh when you need him, geez. But either way, they push forward and eventually find their way to their old school Hexide where they meet a bunch of survivors and start to hatch a plan. They gotta get up there. That castle hovering above the Titan's head is called the Archives. The collector's castle where he's storing all the people he's turned into puppets. And up in the archives, the collector just likes to hang out with King, who's trying desperately to rein in the collector's destructive tendencies. But while the collector isn't looking, King sneaks off to this secret lair deeper in the archives where we find Ida and Lilith. Both safe, sound, and not toys. The three of them are working to learn about the Collector and find a way to eventually stop him so things can go back to normal. But King wants to be careful. The Collector, as powerful as he is, is just a kid. And it doesn't seem like he has any family left. King knows what it's like to be the last of his kind. He understands the Collector and wants to help, but also knows that he has to be stopped. Meanwhile, back at Hexide, just a, a whole bunch 
bunch of craps going down. Uh, breaking it down real quick. One, Luce uses memory magic to find this crazy glyph she once saw Belos use to travel directly to the Titan's head. That'll be useful. Two, Kikimura shows up. I, I can't remember if I've mentioned her, but she's crazy and starts attacking the gang. Three, after a series of unfortunate events involving Willow getting overwhelmed and losing control of her powers, Hunter somehow develops magic powers he never had before, using them to save his friends, and most importantly, four, while hiding from Kikimura, Luce and Camila finally have a heart-to-heart -heart talk where Camila apologizes for trying to turn Luce into something she's not. And having finally realized that all she ever wanted was to be understood, Luce's palisman egg finally begins to hatch. And just in time for the rest of the gang to catch up so they can all escape to the Titan's head. And that's the last we'll see of Kikimura. Say bye, everyone. Bye. I never really liked you. Once everyone's safe and sound at the Titan's head, Luce's palisman fully hatches, revealing a worm on a string. Okay, no. Well, it kinda. This is String Bean. They're a snake shifter, a weird little snake thing that can turn into whatever other creature they want. It's cute. And for a brief moment, everything seems okay. That is until the collector attacks. And wait, is that rain? What are they doing with the collector? Ah, right. Yeah, forgot about that. So while all this was happening, Goopy Goop Bellos needed a new body to inhabit, eventually finding his way into the archives and possessing Rain Whispers, former head of the Bard Coven, rebel against Bellos, and Ida's old romantic partner. While possessing their body, Bellos starts to manipulate the Collector, telling him he's in danger, that King is going to betray him, and that Luce is back to stop him. Which, to be fair, isn't entirely wrong. It's just a little exaggerated. So right as Luce's palisman hatches and everyone feels safe for a moment, we see the Collector and Bellos spying on them. The Collector is now led to believe that everything Bellos said was the truth, so when Bellos tells the Collector to attack, he does. And with that, we're in finale territory. No going back now. And right at the start, things aren't going that great. The Collector turned Luce's friends into puppets and is using them to trap Luce, Ida, and King in waking nightmares. But when the Collector goofs up his Amity and says, I challenge you to a witch's battle, Luce is like, <laughs> um, Actually, it's Witch's Duel. <laughs> and quickly catches on to what's happening. The absolute power of Luce's friggin' dorkiness momentarily breaks the illusion so her friends can tell her how to snap out of it. So, using her light glyphs, Luce is able to wake herself up and do the same for Ida and King. And for the first time this whole season, Luce, Ida, and King are all finally back together. The reunion is short, though, as the Collector pops in to play some games with them. And by play games, I of course mean place their lives in mortal danger for his amusement. Yeah, the Collector doesn't really have a grasp on the whole concept of death and what that means to mortals. He kind of looks at everyone around him as, well, toys. So we get another montage of Luce and the gang being put through the Collector's wacky games. Their lives are in danger. Man, a lot of montages this season, huh? It's almost as if they were planning to make a lot more episodes, but for some reason weren't allowed to and had to cram a whole season's worth of story into just three episodes, but... <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds of that? Anyway, while all this was going on, Bellos, still controlling Rain, flies off to their old castle with just, just a real bad idea. So remember how I said the Boiling Isles is built on the corpse of a giant dead Titan? And remember how Bellos' old throne room was built at the heart of the Titan? And even though it was dead, the heart was still beating? And remember how Bellos can now possess whatever or whoever he wants? Yeah. Nah, it's probably nothing. Let's check back in on Luce. After trying to play with Luce, Ida, and King for a while, and them very clearly not being into it, it being the imminent threat on their lives, the Collector gets sad, and the gang is finally able to just sit down and talk to him. And here we get some long-awaited backstory on the Collector. Apparently, a... Uh, Hmm. Apparently, a long time ago, the Collector's siblings, called the Archivists, sent him down to the Boiling Isles to play with all the Titans that roam the surface. And the Collector made friends with all the little baby Titans, just like King. But the sheer power of the Titans scared the Archivists. Apparently, the only thing more powerful than a Collector's magic is a Titan. So the Archivists started wiping them out one by one, and that made the big Papa Titan real mad. But then he goofed up and blamed the Collector for what his siblings did, trapping him in that moon tablet and seeing stealing him away for yeah, as long as it took to get to this point. So the Collector really is just a lonely kid looking to make friends, but doesn't know how. So Luce decides to teach him by showing him how she became friends with Ida, King, and the others, bringing him to multiple places across the Boiling Isles that meant a lot to her. Wait, what? what's that over there? Ah! 
Okay, so while Luce was teaching the Collector about kindness and forgiveness, Bellows ditched Rain's body and hopped right into the Titan's heart, now taking control of the entire Boiling Isles. That's... That, that's maybe not going to be helpful. And with the power of a Titan now at his fingertips, what's the first thing that Bellos does? Moss! Moss everywhere! Evil death-bringing moss! Bellos's moss spreads all across the Boiling Isles, consuming everything in its path and soon forming a smaller, but still treacherously large Titan itself. This mossy Bellos Titan just starts spitting blue all over the place. But the Collector, having processed what Luce taught him, decides to pull a Steven Universe and just tries to hug it out. Okay, no, Luz flies in in the last second to save the Collector, but in doing so, she got hit and the infection started. Soon, it fully overtook her, disintegrated, and left Luz dead and gone. Cause of death? Moss. Obviously, this enrages Ida and King, who both go into full monster mode and attack Bellows, and the Collector starts to process that Luz is dead and what that really means. Meanwhile, Luz is fine. Well, Kinda. She is dead, but she's not gone. We see her floating through this weird interdimensional purgatory where she meets, get this, Papa Titan. Yes, King's dad. The Titan the Boiling Isles is built on and the one Bellos is currently puppeting. Also, he's voiced by Aaron Hansen from Game Grumps. This guy? Look at me! <laughs> <laughs> he does a great job. Anyway, Papa Titan is like, Luce, you looked after my kid real good. As a reward, here's literally all my powers. Okay, go save the world. I'm gonna die now. Bye! <coughs> <coughs> And then Luce just shoots right back up to the surface, now reborn with crazy Titan superpowers. She saves Ida King and the Collector from Belos and flies off to the Titan's head. The Collector goes off on his own to protect everyone in the archives, having learned the error of his ways. And Luce, Ida, and King just go on a moss killing spree, helping to stop Belos' invasion of the Boiling Isles before plunging right into the heart of the Titan, saving Rain, who's been stuck in the moss this whole time, and then just ripping Belos out of the Titan's heart by hand. Hand. And with Bellows forced out of the Titan, he loses control, all the moss evaporates, and the Boiling Isles is saved. Hooray! But Bellows isn't done. With his plan completely foiled, this guy makes one last desperate attempt to gain control. He shapeshifts to take the form of his former self, Philip Wittabane, and lies through his teeth. He's like, oh, wow, did I do that? <laughs> That's awkward, right? Well, <laughs> it's a good thing you were here. I was actually cursed the whole time. That's... Uh, that that's right, and you freed me, and... <laughs> yeah, no one's buying any of Bellos's crap anymore. And Luce just backs away while Bellos is pelted with acid rain and literally stomped out of existence by Ida, King, and Rain. So Bellos is dead. Luce then loses her Titan powers, the Collector helps turn everyone back to normal and return them home, and all our heroes get reunited with their families. And... wait. Hold on. One, two, three, four... Did no one die? Like, besides Bellas and Flapjack? Yeah. Huh. Would you look at that? <laughs> Basically everyone survived. Well, dang. The Collector, knowing how much growing up he still needs to do, flies off back to the cosmos. Luce gets reunited with their friends and family. Ida and King meet Camila for the first time. The gang get reunited with Hootie, who barely had a single line this whole season. Wow. And it seems like everything's back to normal. Fast forward a few years in a classic season finale time skip, and we see Luce in the human realm packing her things for college. In the Boiling Isles? Yeah, take that, Amphibia, with your heartbreaking commentary on letting go and moving on. The Owl House actually lets Luce maintain a life in both the Human Realm and the Boiling Isles. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. And as Luce packs her things, we get a beautiful end credit montage to see what everyone's up to now. Looks like Willow's become a Grudgeby Pro, which is, like, a wizard sport? I, I can't remember if I mentioned it before. Hunter's carving Palisman now and even got himself a new bird. Funny internet videos. Amity is... Well, I'm not 100% sure what she's doing, but she looks like she's killing it. Speaking of which, Amity's dad has been working with Rain and the former Coven heads to develop a way to remove Coven sigils as the Boiling Isles ushers in a new era of, like, freedom and peace and whatever. And then there's the brand new University of Wild Magic, where Luce is about to attend. Gus is here teaching people about the human realm, which is really cute, and Ida is the headmaster. Yes, rebellious, school-hating Ida is now the headmaster of a university. And King, 
is taller. And everyone gets together to meet Luce and Camila as they make their way back to the Boiling Isles, and they all throw her a huge surprise party. Even the Collector shows up to throw a crazy cosmic fireworks show. Everyone then piles in for one last freeze frame to send things off, and that was the Owl House. And oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, there it is. Now the denial starts. 